bet you're trying to share this for Hello again, everybody. Hello. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for being here. You know, I was trying to decide whether I should change my shirt. Not. Because I wore it all day. I don't think it's new. But um, I remembered something. I remembered Beaver Nelson and Scrappy Judd staying at our house in Nashville when they were on tour. And they slept on the floor with like no pillows. They would not change their clothes. They did not use our shower. They didn't want a bite of food. They wouldn't have coffee. They came, they slept on the porch on the hard floor, and left, you know, slept with their shoes on, and took off in the van the next morning. And Bridget, my wife, and I were like, you know, we have a nice house here. We could scramble you some eggs. No, no, we're fine. You want a shower? They're all greasy and sweaty. No. So I thought, okay, that's rock and roll, right? They're like Buddhist monks. And I have not seen beavers since that day, right? I decided to wear the same shirt in his honor. I walked in, and there he was. Awesome. And I told him the story, and he said, you know, Your, you know, ruins you. Like you just gotta be hard to the bone. So my shirt doesn't stink. <laughs> um, so I did the songwriting session thing today. It was really fun. Thanks to you that were here. And I will say that the number one question that people ask a songwriter is, "What came first, the music or the words?" Right? That's the nobody asked me that today. But that's the question that we all kind of roll our eyes at. But I'm going to tell you on this first song, the music came first. Maybe there's 
starting to sound good. <laughs> we, didn't know. Uh, we didn't make a set list. Uh, let's do like the best thing to jump up. Soul Power, S O L. Oh. Yeah, got it. And uh, yeah. so I want you to write me a song about the sun. So I wrote that and another song on the same day, which isn't about the sun, but has the word sun in the title.
in far away hearts Pretty soon she'll be falling in love Clouds roll by, casting their shade Promise is broken and promise is made Pretty soon, never come soon enough or somebody and I got Don Walzer's number. I called him up and I said, hey, my name's Gwillow and I'm a songwriter. I write songs that Tony Price does. And, well, you must be pretty good then. He was very nice. And I don't think I mentioned the dream. I just said, like, I got this song and I was wondering if you wanted to help me finish it. And he said, sure, come on to the house. So I drove down to Don Walzer's house and met him and Patricia and uh, played him the song. The part that I, I told this story this afternoon, but I left out the part that I was nervous and I couldn't yodel. Oh. And I didn't know that being nervous made you not be able to yodel, right? <laughs> I never would have yodeled in the first place, but I dreamed it. The yodel was in the dream. So I'm like, I'm like eh, eh, and I'm like, there's supposed to be yodeling there, Tommy. You don't, you'll handle that. But it was pretty embarrassing. Um, but he, he didn't, he wasn't a co-writing kind of guy. And you know, it was fine. It was a dream and it was cool to go down there and meet him and we stayed friends. Um, but I went like to Pizza Hut and just finished it in about five minutes. <laughs> um, but so when I'm not sure if I can yodel, I have to go. And it's like if I can do that, 
It's gonna work. So, I think I got it. You good? You need to do a couple things over there? I'll get it. She said, here, take this. And it was a Xanax. I had never had one. I've never had one since. She said, it'll make you feel better, right? So I took it. It's not really recommended with a lot of whiskey, but um, whatever. And I guess I stumbled home and went to bed and passed out. I don't remember. But when I woke up in the morning, my guitar and the boombox that I would sing into were laying on the floor of my room. I lived in a windowless concrete block building and slept in a mattress on the floor. It was the, uh, the shed for a car wash. It's where they stored the chemicals. That's where I lived. Uh, so it was clear that I had done something with the guitar and the tape deck before I had passed out. So I rewound the tape, and there was the song. It was complete, finished song. So it's a two-part story. That's part one. And then the song, I guess the song's part three. Uh, fast forward 25 years, I'm playing with Tony Price at a festival in North Carolina, and um, I, we're playing this song, and I look, and everybody in the front row is crying, like tears are, are streaming down their face, and I was like, this is weird, and I look at Tony, and she's, she's crying while she's singing the song. That sadness that I put in that song in 1986 was still in there, it's, <laughs> and it was coming out. <laughs> 
like 25 years later, it's like coal under the ground, right? It stores the energy of the sun. A song like stores your emotions. That's what it is, right? It's one of the things it is. So it freaked me out. <laughs> and, uh, so I never touched the song. Like what it was on the tape. I just was afraid to edit it. Like, there's one word or two here that I could probably do better. But I thought, you know, I don't even know where this came from. <laughs> I mean, it came from me, but I didn't feel like I had the right. Yeah, it's it's uh, I, I didn't repeat the experiment. But I didn't feel like I had the, the right to edit. So it's it's what was on that tape that morning. Right, bum us out, man. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I didn't hear. Bum us out. Oh yeah, okay, that's what I'm here for, man. <laughs>
a bone. Are you gonna throw me a bone tonight? couldn't have you crying forever. So, a little note about that song. When I wrote it with my friend Eric Elliott, this part was supposed to be woof, 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 right? Like, um, I don't know, it rhymes with whatever's before. Woof, 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 woof. And Tony's like, I'm not woofing. <laughs> and I argued with her, because like, you know, we had just written a song, and like, it had to have the woof, woof, woof. So she wouldn't do it. So, we had a session booked. We went in the studio and we cut the song and she went off to eat lunch and I called my band who lived two houses away from she was like, get down here quick. So they all get in there, the engineer gets them all around the mic and they start, I, was, I wasn't forcing it on her, I just thought if she heard it, you know, uh, she would love it. And, uh, so they're out there and she walks in. And, the expression on my friend's faces, because Tony was fearsome, and, and they knew that she didn't want this, and like it was just they were in terror. <laughs> they were terrified, and she came storming in. And I was like, I'm oh, just you know wanted to. Die. <laughs> so, uh, and she was right, of course. I mean, the, the song is silly enough; it doesn't need woof woof woof. <laughs> but actually, I like it. It's nice to hear your version. There is a song that could have some woofing on it. Yeah. <laughs> No. 
more of a woof 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 <laughs> 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 Drink of water here. <laughs> so I'm gonna play another song that I dreamed. I know it seems weird, but I dream songs. We should all be so lucky. <laughs> so how do I do that? You're a quarter What kind of water are you drinking? Dream water. <laughs> Uh, in the, the dream key, I, when I dream songs, they're always in A flat. So this is in the dream key. <laughs> Just let 
was broke It was busted flat Cause I bet on a loser He took everything I had When I prayed for sunshine I got nothing but a rain just now. I've never played it without playing the licks. But I thought, well, Rich should do that. <laughs> and as soon as I stopped playing the lick, I didn't know where the hell I was. So, but we, we made it. We're okay. We're still moving. I think it was called Hannah and Her Sisters. Wow. So we're, we're talking like 1987, yeah. you know, before he was like married to his daughter. Um, and in, in one of the little conceits that Woody Allen had in the movie was these sort of like silent film. It would stop and there would be like a line. It was almost like a chapter heading. And one of them said, lucky I ran into you. And I just was sitting there and I just picked up the guitar and boom, I hit this song. So it has nothing to do with Woody Allen. But that's where it came from. Okay, so I like telling these stories when I remember to. So back in about 1987 in Nashville, my roommate was a recording engineer, and uh, he's working on records down on Music Row, and he came home one day and he said, oh, I'm recording this band from Austin. And uh, he said they're called the Wagoneers. It's their first album. And I was like, oh, what kind of music? He said, it's Western Swing. And I said, well, you should pitch him some of my songs. And he's like, you can't write Western Swing. And I was like, yeah, I can. And uh, he said, I'll bet you. And he was like, bet you a dollar or something that you can't. And so I wrote this song, which I don't think is Western Swing. But um, you'll notice in the third verse that it talks about betting. And that's in reference to I had been bet that I couldn't write this song. <laughs> and I did. Yeah, this is a great song, and I gotta get it right. <laughs> I can probably still do it. <laughs> Learn that you are what you choose And I'm losing these Louisville 
line And I finally shook myself loose It was then that I learned There are harder things than paying your dues Like a loser
misty moonlight shine on me. Do it. 
my body to the wave And then I'll swim away Somehow it's about passing through from one level of existence to another. I don't usually like to explain what songs are about, but since I didn't know for a lot of time, I thought I'd share more with you. Some hard-earned knowledge. Um,
That's Quello. That's Rich Brotherton, y'all. Thank you. Good night. We just played the encore. That was dumb. That <laughs> That's right, yeah. Did you write that song, Rich? Yeah, yeah, no, no. This guy will tell you later. He knows yeah. it better than I do. Uh, okay, here's what I need the lyric sheet for. Uh, two, two first. I wrote this song, and then Tony recorded it, but some of the lyrics she felt were like not, it didn't work for a woman to sing, but instead of like asking me to rewrite it or uh, changing it, she just mumbled. <laughs> and it worked, it was fine. But so, so then I'm trying to learn the song, and I don't have a lyric. I mean, at first, they didn't have a lyric sheet, so I'm listening to her version, I was like, oh, she's mumbling through there. So I had put it on a record, so I pulled up my version, and then I pulled up a file that I had in Microsoft Word, and all three of them had different lyrics. <laughs> and I was like, that's too long ago, I don't know. And I ended up writing uh, more. <laughs> so there's like, I mean, it's just a few little changes, but there's... There's like four versions of this lyric now. 4.0, yeah, so far. <laughs>
sky, and I'm like, moonlight, 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 moonlight. No daylight! daylight. <laughs> and for, for a while, I thought they were laughing at me. <laughs> what, is there like a booger? Am I done? Why are they laughing at me? <laughs> they weren't laughing at you, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, if that didn't break a string, nothing will. <laughs> well, you hit it pretty hard to pull that one off. Free. 
So the story got back to me, and I was like, oh. and uh, so I knew somebody at Dwight Yoakam's, you know, like his manager or something. So I got Champ. Champ had like a little four-track recorder, and I arranged, like I told those guys I'd pay him like 20 bucks or something, and it was Benny Rye and Dope Short. Dope Short. Oh, yeah. and, and I'm waiting around, like you can't get Champ out of bed before 3 o'clock. <laughs> and, and you can't get these guys before three o'clock. So I'm like sitting on Champ's stoop, and finally they come rolling up in Benny's Cadillac that he lives in, and they they're drinking like, you know, like grain alcohol out of these plastic bottles, like shampoo bottles, like they've just rolled out of bed, and then Champ rolls out of bed, and he somehow manages to get this song on tape before they ever all too drunk. And so I sent it to Dwight's manager. I had told him the whole story. Nothing back. And like six months later, I got a form letter. Thank you for your submission, but we're not looking for this type of material at this time. I was like, oh, you gave me $100. You gave me <laughs> so yeah, I made $100 off of Dwight. On this one.
Burning down 
Thank you so much. True story.
Thank you.